Okay, picked up a few interesting things over the weekend. First thing I got is this old Western Electric 302 desk telephone. I think this particular model is probably from the early 50s. I haven't really looked inside of it yet. And when I saw this at the flea market, I thought it didn't have a plunger in it, but upon further examination, I discovered that it does have a plunger. It's just stuck and won't pop up. So it's probably due to just dirt and gunk that needs to be cleaned out. And this dial is also gunked up. You can see it takes a long time to return back, so that phone will definitely need to be refurbished, but that's okay. I plan on fixing it up and putting it into use. And then a friend of mine went to an auction and picked up a few things for me. He found this old signal cool spot electric fan from probably the 1930s. Unfortunately, it's kind of rusty and someone has removed the oscillator gearbox off of the back, so I don't know if this fan will end up getting fixed or used for parts, but you know, it only cost me 12 bucks, so it's not like I'm out a lot of money on it. And the guy at the auction said it ran, so let's see what it does here. Well, it does run, but I can tell that it has some bearing issues. Hopefully a good cleaning and lubrication will solve the problem. Okay, let's see what else we've got. And at the same auction, my friend picked up this 1963 Westinghouse tube-type record player. They'll stay up. Well, so I guess that's going to need to be looked into. Okay, it has a Gerard record changer, which looks to be one of their lower end jobs, but still a decent changer. And there's the amplifier. We have controls for volume, balance, bass, and treble. This amp, there's not much to it. It's just a single ended 50C5 output tube per channel with a 12AX7 tube for the driver and a silicon rectifier for the power supply. And I'll pull the back and show you what the inside looks like. And when I removed the back cover, the first thing I noticed was that one of the original 6x9 speakers was laying inside of the cabinet with a torn cone and the other speaker was missing. But you might remember I junked out a cheap Morse electrophonic console a few months ago. I made a rather dramatic YouTube video of that. And in that console were a couple of 6x9 speakers that will work just nicely in this Westinghouse. And I've already recapped the amplifier. I replaced the original electrolytic capacitors and the paper capacitors. Somebody replaced the silicon diode rectifier at some point and replaced the fusible resistor leading up to it and I'm going to replace that with a newer part as well as some more resistors in here just for good measure. And of course the Gerard record, cha record changer was all, is all gunked up and needs to be cleaned and lubricated and the original cartridge was shot which was a Euphonics U8, but fortunately the tone arm will accept virtually any half inch mount cartridge, so I'm just going to replace it with something like a Fansteel P226 or P228, and we should have this one going pretty soon. I'm probably going to put this one up for sale, but I don't know if anybody's going to want to pay what I'm probably going to ask for it. So that's the way it is around here. People will go out and pay hundreds of dollars for one of those Crosley abominations, but when you take a 
properly restore an old record player like this and put a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars on it, they act like you're trying to rip them off. I guess they don't understand the amount of parts and labor involved in getting one of these things going, but I'll fix this and if somebody wants to buy it, great. If not, let them go buy one of their Crosleys and I'll just keep this one. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Got one more thing, I believe. And last, we have this 1948 Philco AM radio phonograph, 78 RPM phonograph. And there's some veneer damage on the top, but should be fixable. I've seen a heck of a lot worse. And there's some veneer damage down along the bottom here that can probably be fixed. And there's the record changer. Kind of an interesting looking Philco record changer. And I'll show you the underside of it. And here's the record changer mechanism and the chassis. As you can see, it's just a five tube chassis. It uses five Loctal based tubes. Now one thing interesting about these Philco's is it's, it, it may be a five tube chassis, but it's not an ordinary five tube chassis. Most of these Philco's from this time period used a voltage doubler power supply. So actually the performance of these was very similar to what a five tube radio with a power transformer might give. And there's the tube diagram showing the model number and all that information. Okay, there you go, my latest finds. Yet more projects to work on. And you can see I really can't keep much in this basement because every time it rains, water runs in here. That's why I have the little stereo propped up on bricks right now to try to keep the legs from getting wet. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.